What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to use large language models locally to create embeddings and to store these embeddings in a vector store in order to be able to do similarity search, for example, for recommender systems. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to use large language models locally to create embeddings and embeddings are basically just representations in vector space of some given data. So for example, you can have a collection of news articles or titles of news articles, and you can embed them into vector space, meaning that one title is then represented as a vector of a certain size, all the vectors have the same size. And all these vectors can then be stored in a vector database or a vector store. And then you can perform similarity search to find the most similar uh, articles or article titles given a new article title, which can be very useful for recommender systems because you cannot just do that with text data that is naturally text data. You can also do that with uh, everything that you can somehow put into text form. So for example, you might have different items in a store. You can represent those items as a text prompt where you say, this is the title of the item. This is the price. This is the category and stuff like that. And everything that you can somehow put into text, you can then embed into vector space. So the idea would be in a recommender system, you have a new item, you say I like this item, and then you get the five most similar items based on the vector uh, embeddings. And of course, the intelligent part here is to find good embeddings to find embedding uh, embeddings that when you do a similarity search in vector space, you find actually similar stuff. And the whole intelligence is already contained in large language models. That's the basic idea here. Now to do that today, we're going to need a couple of things. First of all, you're going to need Olama on your system. I have a video on Olama already. It's basically uh, a very convenient way to just run large language models locally. The installation is quite easy. You can go to the GitHub page and I think where's the installation part? Uh, install. There you go. So on Windows, currently, you have to use the Windows subsystem for Linux. On Linux, basically, this is the one command that you have to run. And on Mac, you have to download it. It's a very simple installation process. And once you have that, you basically have this thing running on localhost when you start it. So what you have to do is you have to open up your terminal. I think the first time you run it, you have to do Olama surf, then it's running. And then you can just do Olama run. And for example, Llama two, or Mistral or something like that. Um, and then it's going to download the model if you don't have it. And then you can use it as an as a normal uh, LLM here in the command line, you can ask it questions. But this is not what we're going to do here, we're going to send a request to the API uh, from Python. And for this, we're going to need a couple of packages. First of all, we're going to need obviously requests. We're going to need NumPy, and we're going to need face. Now face is the vector store that I choose here, you can also choose a different one if you know how to use it. This is just some vector database. Again, there are multiple out there, you don't have to use face, I'm going to use face for this video today, because it's quite simple. So we start by saying import requests, and import numpy as and p and then also import face, of course. And then we're also going to or we're not going to import anything else, but we're going to send a request to the embedding API to see how it works. So the basic idea is the following, you send a request, a post request to a certain endpoint, and the endpoint is running locally on your system. So HTTP colon slash slash localhost. And it's running on the port by default 11434. And now in particular, we want to target the embeddings API. So we need to say slash API slash embeddings, because we're not just asking for a response to a prompt, we're actually asking for embeddings. Uh, and this can be done like this. And what we're going to send here is a JSON object, so a dictionary. And this dictionary is going to contain two fields. First of all, the model that we want to use, I'm just going to go with llama two, again, you can also use Mistral or uh, all the other models that are available with Olama. Um, and then we're going to have the prompt and the prompt is the actual data that we want to embed. Again, everything that can be represented as text can be put in here. So it doesn't have to be actual text data like a news article, it can also be something like uh, a sequence of user interactions in a session. And if you represent it as text like action one, action two, action three, and so on, it can also be used as a prompt, uh, you just have to keep it consistent, consistent to be able to, um, to generate meaningful embeddings here. So let's just go with a hello world prompt just to see how it works. Nothing too fancy here, we're going to embed the word the text hello world into uh, vector space. How do we do that? 
uh, basically by just running this code. And then in particular, we're going to get from the response, the JSON object, and we want to get the embedding. And this embedding is going to just be a vector. So I run this and you can see it's a vector just contains uh, numbers. And I think that I mentioned is 4096. Yeah, this is the dimension of the vectors that we get from Llama 2 at least. All right, so this is the process that we use. So we can define D, the dimension to be 4096. We can then copy this down here. And what we want to do now is we want to get a collection of titles, for example. So I have uh, titles of news articles. And of course, you can, if you don't want to generate your own titles here, go to ChatGPT and ask it to give you a list of 100 different titles that you can play around with. I'm just going to write some myself. So mind blowing. AI uh, revolutionizes um, field of biology or something like this. Or actually, I'm going to copy what I already have here because I don't think that there's much value in me typing this out now while I'm recording. So I'm going to just paste it down here um, like this. So this is what I did in my prepared code, basically just five items here. So mind blowing new AI model revolutionizes biology, Silicon Valley startup finds a new way to predict protein folding, team XYZ wins World Cup in rugby, I don't even know if there is a World Cup in rugby, uh, biology, one of the most underrated college majors and novel machine learning algorithm changes neuroscience forever. So you can see we have four things with biology here or related to biology, just to keep it somewhat similar one with sports. Uh, and the idea now is to embed all of these uh, titles into vector space to have a um, a collection of already embedded titles. And then when we get the new title, we can compare it to the embeddings of the already existing titles. Uh, and we can find the most similar articles. Um, yeah, so what we want to do is we want to create first of all, an index. So basically a vector database index, we create it by saying face index, uh, flat L2. Um, and the dimension of the vectors is going to be D, which is 4096. Um, now what we need to do is we need to create an empty array. So NP or actually not empty, but full of zeros, we're going to say NP zeros, and we want to have length titles. So how many titles do we have? Um, five titles in this case, and the dimension is 4096. So this is the shape. And the data type is going to be float 32. All right, so this is our empty array now full of zeros. What we want to do here is we want to say for I and then title in enumerate titles. We want to take this, we want to embed the title. So instead of saying hello world here, we're going to embed the actual title. Um, and then we're going to say the embedding itself is going to be rest JSON embedding. And we're going to replace that in x. So we're going to say x at position i is going to be np array of this embedding. And we do that so that in the end, we can just add all of this to the store to the to the index. So we're going to say index dot at x. That's basically it. So this should run without any problems. There you go. And now what we can do is we can get a new prompt. So we can get a new title. Um, <clears throat> For example, we can say new prompt equals and then I can just go with uh, recent progress in AI shows potential for manipulating brain chemistry, for example. Um, that's just a new prompt. now. And of course, what we're going to do now is we're going to get this We're actually going to get this here. And we're going to prompt new prompt here, we're going to get the embedding. And with this embedding, now what we're going to do is we're going to say D I D being the distances, I being the indices of the of the neighbors. And what we want to do is we want to say index, uh, or actually, we need to say uh, embedding is equal to NP array, otherwise, we cannot use that. And the D type is important that we specify manually flow 32. So we want to say index dot search embedding and want to get the five nearest neighbors. So all of them basically in the correct order. And then we're going to just print NP array 
titles and we want to get the indices. So I flatten. That is it. Not enough values to unpack. What's the problem here? Where are we actually index search embedding five? Uh, did I forget something? Oh, yeah, sorry, we need to put this into a list. No, still doesn't work. Uh, let me just Oh, sorry. We need to put it into a list, but we need to do it here. There you go. So our prompt here, recent progress in AI shows potential for manipulating brain chemistry is the most similar to novel machine learning algorithm changes neuroscience forever, of course, because neuroscience brain chemistry is sim uh, similar, makes a lot of sense, you can see that this one, the sports one is the least similar. Now, let's go ahead and change this to some stuff like fighter wins UFC title or actually wins is uh, contained here. So let's use a different word gets UFC title or something like this. When I run this, you can see that this is the most similar one, even though you can see that there is no word that actually um, in any way is the same. So we have fighter gets UFC title, and then we have team XYZ wins World Cup in rugby. But it recognizes, of course, that this is a similar topic. So it matches it, you can see that there's quite some in intelligence involved here. It doesn't just focus on similar words, it focuses on similar content, similar meaning. Um, yeah, maybe we can do something like California, maybe we're going to get Silicon Valley. So California seems to be on the rise or something like this, whether that's true or not, it's up to you. But let's go and say, Oh, actually, this is interesting. Now it tells me that this is the least fitting. Okay, I wouldn't expect that California, maybe companies on the rise, something like this. Okay, still, I don't know why. Uh, okay, this is a bit surprising. But what what you would want to do here is you would want to fill up your database with lots and lots of whatever you're trying to to recommend. So for example, a lot of items from a store, a lot of user interactions of a session database, a lot of um, news articles, not just the titles, but the full articles, whatever you want to embed, just make sure you have a lot of embeddings and then go ahead and um, try to find, you know, try to build a recommendation system around it. So for example, in the case of news articles, you could just re recommend the most similar articles to the ones you liked, or the most similar items. So instead of having titles here, you could say something like uh, item name is I don't know, toothbrush, XYZ or something. And then you could say price uh, $20. Or actually, I think you say dollars 20. And then you can say uh, something like category uh, hygiene, um, and, and so on, you can just do it like that. And you can use the same structure for all the different items. And then you're going to hopefully uh, get similar, uh, similar items recommended when you when you have a good item that you like, you can go and search your large database full of items. So yeah, this is how you can use your LLMs locally to do or to generate embeddings. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.